I live right in the middle of Brighton. We've got great parks here, we've got the sea of course, and we've got the amazing South Downs. But what we don't have is houses with big gardens. My own garden is only about 10 metres by 7 metres and designing it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. I wanted to put everything in it but you can't. The key to being a good designer is being brave enough to leave stuff out. You end up with what you need but not necessarily what you want. It's a compromise but if you haven't got much space you've just got to get over it. This is a new garden. It was only finished last year and I'm still doing the planting. And what we did was we sat down and drew up a list. So lounge area, storage, dining table, somewhere to cook, a pond, and of course, lots and lots of plants. I was lucky because on two sides I had these amazing flint walls, which are probably 180 years old, as old as the house. And all I had to do was pull all the ivy and the old trellis off and reveal them in their full beauty. On top of the walls I put cedar slats. This is good for security as burglars find it hard to climb because they can't support a person's weight. But they also give a bit more privacy from the neighbours and most importantly of all, they're an opportunity to grow plants. You can see the trachylospermum is just beginning to cling on and starting to cover them. So in a few weeks this will be absolutely smothered in scented white flowers. On the other side of the garden I wasn't so lucky because it was just a tumble down brick wall. So what I did was I covered it in this charred black timber. It's a trick I learned from Chelsea Flower Show last year where putting a black backdrop means that you can just show off the amazing green plants in front. The other thing about using that in a small garden like this is that the black recedes. So actually it can make the garden feel a little bit bigger as it just kind of recedes into the shadows. You can get the same effect just by painting a brick wall or a fence, just, just black, really simple. Because every square inch is precious, when I came to doing the paving, I made sure that there was just enough space to walk around behind the chairs when people are sat down, but no more than that, so that I could wrap all the planting around the paved areas. I really hate it when gardens are paved from wall to wall. It makes it really soulless. Purbeck's a limestone, as is the chalk in the nearby down, so it somehow feels like it fits just right with the flint walls and everything else in this garden. What I've done is use lots of different size units though, so the pictures behind me are like sets or cobbles. They're small and they actually work well in this small space and make it feel a little bit bigger. But then by bringing in huge lumps of the stone like this, bringing massive things into a big space, a big pond, big rocks, big furniture. That actually works. If you flood a space with lots of small things, it makes it feel cluttered, small and claustrophobic. The worktop and storage unit are cast concrete. It was made in situ rather than dragging anything big and heavy through the house. But the colour works really well with the Purbeck stone. It's important in a small garden not to mix too many materials because it can look like a right dog's dinner. In between the paving, I've put strips of mind your own business. The reason for that is because it means when it rains, instead of all the water going into the drains, it actually goes down and into the ground and that's much better for the urban environment. I love this particular plant because where it gets walked on, it's nice and tight and compact and where it's under the chairs and out of the way, it just goes wild and crazy. It's just another opportunity to squeeze in a little bit more planting. This seating area is only two chairs big, but that's enough because you can get two on each. So there's ample space here. And importantly, it feels really private because there are some shrubs planted really strategically here and at the back. And that's just enough to give a sense of privacy and block out those prying eyes. People talk of using small trees in small gardens, but that's actually completely the wrong approach. You should be talking about using large shrubs I know it's a subtle difference, but you don't want something that's going to ultimately outgrow the space. I've probably overdone it a bit here, but uh, I've ignored my own advice, but the Osmanthus aquifolium has got these amazing sculptural stems. Being evergreen, it's really good for year-round privacy. 
and of course it flowers, as does the Pittosporum tabara, which is small at the moment, but it's going to grow up quickly. And if I prune out the lower branches, it'll make a wonderful multi-stem shrub. You can see where I've shaped this Chiananthus by removing all of the lower branches and opening up the canopy so you can see into it and see all the plants around it. I grew up in a garden with a pond, so I just had to have one in my own garden. It's one of the reasons I got into gardening in the first place. I just love watching the fish swimming around. And I've got this water spout as well, and the brilliant thing about that is it masks the sound of traffic here in the town. And, you know, all the neighbours are pretty close together, so it cuts out some of that noise. This pond's about half a metre high. Some of it's buried in the ground, so it's actually deeper than it looks. But it's just high enough so cats can't fish into it from here or down from the rocks. So it just protects the fish a little bit. This garden's south facing, it can get incredibly warm, but actually you can create microclimates even in a tiny garden. So by planting a tree or a shrub above, you create the shade down below. And that's allowed me to have all these marvellous gems which I used at Chelsea last year. I've got Cypripedium orchids, Bezier, I've got Chloranthus, amazing ferns, and of course, there's this boring night herons. But I also want to grow plants which love the sun. And in the sunnier open parts of the garden, I've got the Digitalis canariensis, the Canary Island foxglove. It's really well behaved, so nice and neat and compact for a small garden. And then I've got aloes and euphorbias, agapanthus and aryngiums. They're all squeezed in here. I've got too many plants, but I love it. One of the good things about gardening in lockdown, if there is a good thing, is that a lot of the specialist nurseries are still sending out plants, which is brilliant. So I've been able to buy some really great things. And I'm a newfound lover of alpine plants because I'm squeezing them into this little tiny garden. And I spotted this bit of available space and I used it. When the sun goes down, the garden transforms. And when you don't have much space, you need to make the most of it. And for me, that means using the garden at night. And to use the garden at night, you need to have garden lighting. I've got down lighters on the trees and shrubs, casting a warm glow over the paving. Up lighters on the trunks, turning them into living sculptures. And then there are wall washers grazing the flints and picking out the rough texture of the walls. Everything takes on a magical quality. Amongst the planting there are small spotlights creating a romantic glow and then perhaps my favourite trick, a light shining down onto the water surface which projects dancing ripples up onto the surrounding walls. It's mesmerising. <laughs> 